What is going on everyone? Leon checking in and we're at it again with another video. In today's video we'll be unboxing and reviewing Lenovo's Chromebook Duet 5. Now this device comes in several RAM and storage configurations depending on where you buy it. Now I'm interested to see how this device works as I've only used Android tablets and I've been interested in a Chromebook tablet and this device is a two-in-one so you kind of get the tablet factor and the laptop factor. As for this video, it's featured on the Chromebook Chrome Base playlist, so you can find information related to this topic quickly and easily. As always, we only feature products or services I buy, use, or am interested in. Now you can find this item and related items at the Amazon storefront link in the description below. All things said, let's go ahead and get into it. So here we are with the unboxing and the lid is going to slide off nice and smooth and this is arguably one of the best parts of unboxing new tech. Now on the left side we have the detachable kickstand and keyboard packaged together with the power adapter and cable on the right side. Underneath this we have the Lenovo Duet 5 13 inch detachable Chromebook. And underneath this we have the product information. And here's an overview of all items shown with packaging completely removed. So let's talk more about the tablet which is housed in an aluminum frame and measures 12 inches wide by 7.25 inches tall, making it a large piece of hardware. The unit I purchased here features the Qualcomm Snapdragon 7C Gen 2, 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. As for buttons, first we have the power and volume keys which are located towards the top left side of the device. Now these buttons are easy to fill out and they have good click feedback. Moving on we have our first camera, a 5 megapixel unit located in the top bezel which is ideal for video calls or meetings. Above this bezel are the dual microphones. Moving on, the Duet 5 features a quad speaker setup with smart amplifiers, two on each side of the tablet. Finally, we have a USB-C port on the left and right side of the device as well. This allows the user to decide which side is the most convenient to charge from while allowing another device to be plugged in. On the bottom of the tablet, we have the keyboard pogo pen connection and guide receivers. Moving on to the back of the tablet, we have a two-tone color, which looks nice. The official color name of this device is Abyss Blue. Now the top portion is a light blue and features the Lenovo Brandon in the top left edge. On the opposite edge is our second camera, a 8 megapixel unit. The lower portion of the Duet 5, arguably the Abyss Blue, appears to be almost black or even charcoal depending on the viewing angle and lighting and features Chromebook Brandon. Overall, this unit weighs about 2 pounds. So let's talk more about the display, which is a 13.3 inch OLED FHD TS unit powered by Samsung, which essentially guarantees high quality. The display size is maximized by thin bezels, which fall in line with the form factor of today's premium Chromebooks. Logging in the Chrome OS on the Duet 5 is done with either a PIN or password, which feels similar to an Android tablet. Now obviously this display is large, but it features bright vivid colors and works well in bright environments. Then we have the fabric kickstand in the bluish palette. Now this kickstand is reminiscent of origami as it articulates firmly comparable to trying to fold a thick piece of cardboard. Installation of the kickstand is somewhat magical as it self aligns and magnetizes in place on the back side of the tablet without looking, requiring minimal effort. Once installed, it holds securely in place, provides back protection, and improves grip slightly. Now there isn't a whole lot of angle adjustment, but it does prop the display up with a few angle options. And because this tablet is so wide, the stand actually improves support when using the tablet in hand. Now I don't recommend using this device one-handed, but I can actually demonstrate this and the strength of the stand when it's connected to the tablet by placing my hand just like so, and I can pick this whole kit up one-handed. Again, I don't recommend this because again, this tablet is really big. It feels a little awkward and because it's big and awkward, it also feels heavier than two pounds. And I also found out a few times actually and being scared to death of dropping this device that articulating the hinge in hand is no easy task due to their overall size of the hardware. 
and doing this may actually cause the kickstand to slide out of position onto the back of the tablet even though it's secured really nicely with these magnets so the best way to articulate the hinge will be on a flat surface again don't recommend picking this up and trying to articulate the hinge especially if it's like flat against the tablet and then you're trying to pull up on it that's where i found that it actually almost slid out of place and i almost dropped both parts of the kit now this being a tablet of course you can use it in landscape and portrait mode and interesting enough the kickstand actually supports the tablet in portrait mode as well although i probably wouldn't recommend doing this because you can imagine that if this tablet started the tip forward it's going to smack against whatever surface it's going to come into with pretty hard. Finally, we have the attachable keyboard with gray keys and white labels, which unfortunately isn't backlit. Now the keyboard actually secures to the tablet almost magically just like the kickstand using the pogo prongs and the receiver tips. And we'll actually do a demonstration here. It's going to snap into place. And that would be it. And you can see that the screen actually changes here too, depending on what we were doing and what we want to do now that we have a keyboard attached. A benefit here is that this portion of the device doesn't require separate charging as it sips power from the tablet itself. For being lightweight and attachable, the keyboard actually works really well, features good travel and click feedback. The surrounding area continues the abyss blue color scheme with silicone risers to protect the display when the keyboard is folded up against it. Now within this blue abyss, we can also find the clickable touchpad with Lenovo Brandon. Now touchpad speed is set to fast by default and I originally didn't believe this. I actually went into settings to see if there was a faster speed because the mouse wasn't covering enough area for me as I performed a swipe. Now, needless to say there wasn't a higher setting and I did adjust to this and although it's not the best in my opinion it does do the job pretty good underneath the bluish fabric continues now this means the underside of the keyboard should be worry free from scratches but it's also susceptible to staining now this attachable keyboard does serve as a lid to the tablet and secures with magnetism as well However, it doesn't align perfectly to the display as you can see here at the top and also at the bottom. Now, although the kickstand and keyboard protect the back and the front of the Duet 5, the sides are left vulnerable, which is why I opted for a sleeve by eye camo. Now this sleeve is water resistant and also features an external pocket with zipper as well as a convenient carrying handle. Then we have the inner lining, which is going to be nice and soft. It's going to protect the device. And the Chromebook Duet 5 will just slide right in with some extra space at the top here. And then we have dual zippers, so we can zip right to the middle. So let's talk content consumption. Now the Duet 5 works great for streaming services like Netflix and Prime Video. Now personally, I enjoyed using this tablet for reading comics, which can be done in either landscape or portrait mode. First, playing any game that requires the gyroscope is going to be difficult to do because of the size of this tablet. We're going to lose some precision and it's just a little bit more challenging than using a smaller device such as a Google Pixel. 6 Pro or a Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. Also because of how a tablet is naturally held, you could see that our hands are going to be covering those bottom speakers, which could cause the audio to sound muted. Now this display is great for playing games, although I did notice frame drop after playing for an extended period of time after increasing performance. Returning to the bezels, although they're minimal, I haven't had much of an issue holding the device while gaming. But general browsing may have you occasionally tapping on links on the display. For example, you can see this left column in Google News. It's very close and my thumb, just placing it here, gets pretty close to these items. And you can see if I just go over a little bit, I would accidentally tap on something. 
And then we have music and movies which sound good from the quad speakers as demonstrated by this sound test. And then there's content creation, which I'm still using PowerDirector for. Now overall it's workable, but I did experience occasional decoding issues and performance drops compared to a more premium device like the Google Pixelbook Go. Now using the on-screen keyboard can be done in either orientation as well, but although it's best in the orientation you see here, precision is still rough. You're better off using the detachable keyboard. Next we have camera and mic performance, which are best demonstrated from actual use. Now we're going to switch between that front facing camera and the rear facing camera. And you can see there's going to be some delay here. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit longer than in other situations. So here I am recording with that front facing five megapixel camera. I'll also include some pictures here so you can see the picture quality. And we're also using the built in mic. Now at this moment, I can't tell what I sound like until I listen to this clip after. The fact, but I could tell you the video actually looks pretty good. I'm impressed with it. Although this is a camera on a Chromebook, this is pretty much the highest quality you can probably expect up until this point. But I'm impressed because it should work good for video calls or meetings, that kind of thing. Here we are with the rear facing 8 megapixel camera and I'm going to include some pictures here so you can see what picture quality looks like. Now this camera actually looks pretty good here although it is a dim environment things are harder to see but it does the job. And we'll actually get a little bit more of Neo here. We'll get him in the video. You know, not the greatest camera. It's not going to be something comparable to your smartphone, but it's going to do the job if you want to get video of something fairly quickly. Finally, we have battery, and I've had no issue getting a full day's use out of this device. Now, the Duet 5 does support quick charge, and that being said, I did notice a 15 to 20% charge can be had in about 15 minutes, and a 50% charge can be had in about half an hour. <laughs> So let's wrap things up. Overall, I like the minimal bezel design and large display for reading, writing, and watching videos. Although Play Store games do look good on this device, playing anything with a gyroscope will certainly be challenging if not impossible. As for ways to improve this device, I do wish that the keyboard was backlit, and I also wish a fingerprint reader was included. Overall, I like the idea of having simply a tablet when you want a tablet, but then a laptop when you want a laptop by connecting all these modules, which also work really well together. So that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, please leave a like. If you're watching this on YouTube and have any questions or comments, as always, drop those down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Now, there are three ways you can support the content. The first way is to click on the Amazon storefront link found in the description below. There you'll find items that I have bought or would like to buy and anything you buy from the storefront does support the content. The next way to support us is just by sharing this video with someone who might enjoy it or find it useful. And the last way you can show your support is just by clicking the subscribe button. Now liking and subscribing are important because those are your ways to vote on whether you like the content. Liking and subscribing are also important for new viewers and listeners. If new viewers and listeners see likes and subscribers, they're going to think that the content is helpful, worth watching, and listening to. So as always, thanks for watching, and may the universe flow in your favor. And until next time, Leon checking out. Yeah. <laughs>